subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates hello everyone rahul shayer trying to make investing accessible and profitable for the average investor now there are a lot of qualities that differentiate a successful investor from a failed one but there's one quality that often gets ignored i believe this quality is the most important of all one cannot become a successful investor unless one masters this quality this quality is the ability to separate investment from speculation successful investors know how to differentiate between investment and speculation in fact they know this better than most other investors and this is not all they build this huge wall between investment and speculation and rarely jump over and go to the speculative zone on most occasions they stay well within the investment side and get heavily rewarded for it this is not the case for most of us first our lines between investment and speculation are blurred at best and even where we know what investment is and what is speculation we lack self control we often turn greedy and end up speculating more than we should or we are so fearful that even when a stock becomes an attractive investment we deem it to be speculative and stay away from it so how exactly do we correct this mistake how do we differentiate between an investment and a speculation and once we do so how do we ensure we always stay on the right side of investment well if you believe the late walter schloss buying a stock below its book value is investment and everything else is speculation i'm not sure whether you've heard of him but walter schloss was perhaps one of the most anonymously successful investors of all time he was also a very good friend of warren buffett in fact buffett wrote a glowing tribute for walter schloss a few years before walter passed away when walter and his son edwin were asked in 1989 by outstanding investors digest how would you summarize your approach edwin replied we try to buy stocks cheap well so much for mo modern portfolio theory technical analysis macroeconomic thoughts and complex algorithms following a strategy that involved no real risk which is of course defined as permanent loss of capital walter produced results over his 47 partnership years that dramatically surpassed those of the s&p 500 It is particularly noteworthy that he built this record by investing in about 1000 securities mostly of a lackluster type. A few big winners did not account for his success. Now I have done some reading about Walter Schloss. I can say with confidence that Walter hated buying a stock above book value. For him a price to book value of 1 is what he was willing to pay for the stock. nothing more so if a stock had a book value of rupees 100 he will not buy it if the price was significantly higher than 100 paying anything more than rupees 100 constituted speculation as per him so what if walter schloss had to buy the shares of asian paints well he will buy it only if asian paints was available at less than rupees 130 per share Asian Paints currently trades at rupees 2700 per share. It is more than 20 times higher than its current book value. So as per Schloss, Asian Paints is a highly speculative stock. He has a clear idea of what is investment and what is speculation for his own investment strategy. It does not matter to him that a quality blue chip like Asian Paints will never become an investment as per his criterion. this did not make him sad he knew there were plenty of stocks that satisfied his criterion of investment and he was happy investing in those stocks in fact he has put together one of the best track records and has beaten the smartest investors by putting up a big wall between investment and speculation and hardly ever jumping over onto the speculative side even warren buffett did not approve of his definition of investment In fact Buffett publicly admitted that he does not seem to have any influence on Walter Schloss. Walter Schloss was his own man and had his own definition of investment versus speculation. 
what about his friend warren buffett will warren buffett buy asian paints at the current price well please read the book inside the investments of warren buffett 20 cases by yefe lu now the book uh, i have it on my amazon kindle app but haven't read it yet what is the book about well the single most important takeaway is the valuation multiple that warren buffett paid in order to buy 20 of his best investments yes that's what the book is about now the answer is a p multiple of between 7x to 18x yes that's correct if the book is to be believed buffett never paid more than 18 times trailing 12 month earnings multiple even if it meant buying a high quality stock now what does this tell you about buffett's definition of investment versus speculation well as per buffett anything below 18 times constitutes an investment and anything above that a speculation buffett has hardly ever strayed from this definition of investment he has always stayed inside the investment zone the wall of which he himself has erected if buffett had to buy asian paints he would be willing to pay or he would be willing to buy it at a price of rupees 575 or thereabouts now how did we arrive at 575 considering asian paints ttm earnings per share of around rupees 32 a p multiple of 18x gives you a price of around rupees 575 per share all the buffett is willing to pay a lot more than his dear friend walter it is still well below the current price of Asian paints, which is close to rupees 2700 per share. Thus, even as per Buffett's valuation standards, Asian paint stock price has a large speculative element. Let's move to the third and final super investor, Peter Lynch. Peter Lynch was fond of growth stocks and he was willing to pay more for these stocks if there was high growth visibility. But even he was very cautious not to pay more than a p multiple of 25 times no matter how good the growth prospects so if you apply a p of 25 times to asian paints ttm earnings you get a price of rupees 800 per share well this is higher than buffett's 575 per share and significantly higher than walter schloss's rupees 130 per share but this is nowhere close to Asian Paint's current share price of rupees 2700 per share or thereabouts. Now, all three investors are super successful investors. They have earned fabulous returns for themselves and their investors based on their own definition of investment and speculation and by sticking to it at all cost. And yet, none of them find Asian Paint's investment worthy. We can consider the Indian stock market or Mr. Market as the fourth super investor. Across market cycles and going back all the way to the year 2005, Mr. Market has given Asian Paints an average P multiple of around 42 times. Therefore, as per Mr. Market, you can buy Asian Paints at a price of Rs. 1344 or lower. Well, this price is the highest of all the investors. It is still 50% lower than Asian Paint's current market price. In fact, here's the table that will help in bringing out the differences better. As per Walter Schloss's definition of investment, only 5% of Asian Paint's current stock price is investment, while the rest is speculative. For Warren Buffett, the ratio stands at 21% and 79%. It is 30-70 for Peter Lynch and 48% to 52% for Mr. Market based on Asian Paints' average PE from 2006 onwards. So what, does, uh, so what this table says is that Asian Paints looks highly overpriced even after the recent round of correction. Its PE ratio is certainly down from the 110 levels it had reached. But even at the current PE of around 85 to 90 times, it is highly speculative. I'm sure you're thinking what the harm is in having an investment limit of 80 to 90 PE if the stock is an extremely high quality stock like Asian Paints. 
can we not buy such high quality stocks at a price to earnings multiple of 85 to 90 times? Well, you certainly can, but how will you justify paying such a high PE multiple? Do you remember making market beating returns on stocks in your portfolio by paying a high multiple of 80 to 90 times on a consistent basis? I don't think so. Do check out all the multibaggers in your portfolio. I am sure almost all of them you would have purchased at a low PE multiple. So why break your rule and buy a stock with such a high PE multiple even though it is as good quality as Asian paints? Define what is investment and what is speculation for you and stay on the investment side of it. Of course, your idea of an investment should be based on logic and what kind of valuation multiples have worked in the past. It should not be ad hoc like buying Asian paints at a high PE multiple. Please note that there is a difference between intelligent investing and intelligent speculation. Asian paints may be an intelligent speculation. You may not lose a lot of money by investing in the stock because it is such high quality. But whether you will earn market beating returns over the next three to five years, it is not something I would strongly agree with. For that, you need to practice intelligent investing. Your wall has to be a lot to the left of the entire valuation topography. What do you think of this view? Would love to read your comments on this. So do send them ASAP and I will see you again in the next session. Goodbye and take care. By the way, if you want to understand the difference between investment and speculation in more detail, you can check out my brand new learning course, The Lazy Millionaire. Please click the link in the description box below for more details.